All right, Stephen, many people say the second objection is this, is that intelligent design is really an argument from ignorance. We just don't know what the naturalistic causes are right now for the origin of life, but someday we probably will. And so in the meantime, you've developed this mysterious theory of intelligent design to replace what we don't know. What do you say? Well, that's a, you said the objection very well. And, uh, I have a, a sometimes debating partner named Michael Shermer who raises this objection every time. In fact, I, I brought one of the, the quotes that, uh, a quote from Shermer in which he makes the objection. He says something very similar. He says, intelligent design argues that life is too, too specifically complex, that's another way of talking about information, um, to have evolved by natural forces. Therefore, life must have been created by an intelligent designer. And if you, well, let's represent his argument logically and see what he's saying. He's, he's claiming that what we are saying is simply that we don't know of a cause, therefore it must be intelligently designed. We don't know of a naturalistic process, which I represent on the slide with the symbol NP, uh, that can produce the effect in question, which we represent with the symbol E. Since we don't have a natural process that can produce the effect in question, therefore it must be this mysterious thing called intelligent design. But that's not the way we're arguing. That's not the way I'm arguing in Signature in the Cell. I, my argument is that we don't know of a natural process that can produce the effect in question. True, that's part of the argument. But, we're, but we do know of a cause that's capable of producing the effect in question. The effect in question, again, is information, specified complexity, specific functional information. We do know of a cause that can produce that. It's intelligence. Therefore, based on what we know, not what we don't know, but what we know about the cause and effect structure of the world, intelligence is the best explanation for the origin of the information we see in DNA. It's not an argument from ignorance. It's an argument based on our present knowledge of the cause and effect structure of the world. So he's misrepresenting our argument and claiming it's an argument from ignorance. And other people who say, well, intelligent design is just a god of the gaps argument are making essentially the same claim. God of the gaps is another way of saying you're arguing from ignorance. Um, we're not arguing from ignorance, we're arguing based on what we know. Imagine if you were talking about, if you're a, uh, an archaeologist and you discovered the Rosetta Stone, and you start analyzing all those, uh, those, uh, the, those inscriptions and you realize, hey, this was produced by a scribe. Th this is information. It's not just uh, uh, erosional marks from water and wind. No one would say you had uh, committed a scribe of the gaps fallacy. Uh, no, you're, you're making an inference to intelligence based on what we know only intelligence can produce. That only is information. And, and so we would make that inference in any other realm of experience and to claim that there's something illicit about making it in biology is really special pleading. ATRI Production.